You're watching France 24. Germans call it a Jamaica coalition. Angela Merkel officially asking the Greens and the Liberals to form a coalition government. The backroom bargaining's long begun after last month's general election, but the formal talks have been officially announced for October 18th. News comes the day the country's finance minister of 11 years, Wolfgang Schäuble, attends his final Eurogroup meeting before becoming Speaker of the Bundestag. Solange Mujan has more. Striking a deal so she can govern. Angela Merkel has long been against the idea of capping the number of migrants that Germany lets in every year. But she's now walked back on that stance so that her party, the CDU, can once again work with Bavaria's Christian Social Union, the CSU. After hours of closed-door talks on Sunday, the two parties agreed to a, quote, upper limit of 200,000 migrants per year. A cap that even just one day before the compromise on Saturday, the German chancellor made clear she was against. Some people, including myself, look to German law on asylum seekers or Article 16 of the Constitution. It makes no mention of a limit or a number. Others, like the CSU, say that the problems of asylum and immigration are increasingly intertwined and that our resources are restricted. They say we should limit the requests to 200,000 a year. Long-time allies, the CSU broke with Merkel over her decision to let in a million refugees in 2015. The bitter dispute between the once sister parties came to the fore in September, after the CDU received its worst score since 1949. Obliged to form a coalition, a deal with the CSU was just the first step. Merkel must now negotiate with other parties. Among the possible partners, the pro-business FDP and the Greens. With diametrically opposed views on a number of issues, including migration, they will have to work together if they want to govern. Well, for more, we're joined from, uh, from Tallinn by Matthew Karnichnik, Politico's chief Europe correspondent. Thank you so much for speaking with us here on France 24. Thank you. As we saw in that report, the day began with stories about Merkel setting that goal of limiting immigration at 200,000 a year. That was to please the Bavarian-based uh, CSU party. Uh, however, uh, now she's going to try to form a coalition that includes the likes of the Greens. Is this going to slow down the process? Yes, definitely. It's going to be very difficult to get the Greens to agree to even the kind of soft cap that Merkel agreed to last night. Because while she agreed to set a 200,000 limit, they also agreed that that limit could go up if necessary, um, as was the case in 2015, for example, when we saw the large influx of refugees from Syria coming to Germany. So a lot of this is about symbolism at the moment. And that symbolism to have at least some kind of cap, even if it's a nominal cap and not really a hard cap that the Bavarians were looking for, is very important to them. But for the Greens, it's also important to not have this kind of language out there because the whole ethos of their party is about... Uh, letting in asylum seekers, letting in uh, refugees, and not setting these kind of hard limits. So I think it's going to be very difficult in the weeks ahead, not just on this immigration question, but on other questions as well, to, to bring all of these parties that Merkel will be de discussing um, the coalition with together. Yeah, the Greens and the Liberals at loggerheads, for instance, when it comes to uh, issues uh, on uh, how much uh, you get decisions made at the European level. Uh, we know that there are these so-called Jamaica coalitions that have worked at the regional level uh, between the CDU, the Liberals and the Greens. Can it work at the national level? Well, we'll find out next year, probably, because these negotiations are probably going to take a long time to uh, come to kind of a coalition. I think that all of the parties involved here realize, though, that the last thing that regular Germans want at this point is another election, which is really the only other viable alternative at the moment, because the Social Democrats, with whom Merkel's party has been governing with for the past several years in a grand coalition, have said that they don't want to enter into another grand coalition. So this Jamaica construction, as they call it, is really the only other option. And it's not going to be easy to get a deal, and it probably won't be easy to govern afterwards. And even at the state level, it hasn't always been smooth sailing. So I think this is really going to be a challenge for Merkel and also for the other parties, and it is, in, in, in for Germany as a whole, really uh, new territory that they're exploring here. New territory 
of course, the end of that grand coalition that had the Social Democrats in it. We, there was a feeling of an end to an area in Brussels with uh, the finance minister, Wolfgang Schäuble, who's been in the job since 2009. Uh, in his last Eurogroup meeting, Matthew, I I'm seeing that Schäuble was a minister in 1984 under Helmut Kohl. That's right. And he, he joined the Bundestag, the German parliament in 1972. So he's been a member of the German parliament for longer than some of the uh, MPs in Berlin have been alive. So he has really an extraordinary record. And although today we look at Schäuble in the context of the euro crisis and Greece and everything that's happened over the past eight years or so, he really is one of the towering figures of post-war German politics by, by any measure. He was a key figure in putting together German reunification. Kolb made him the point man for reunification in the early 1990s. And if it weren't for a campaign financing scandal in the late 1990s, he was expected to follow Kohl as the next CDU chancellor. And that, that didn't happen. And somebody named Angela Merkel came along and picked up that mantle. But I think that this last job that he's agreed to take on as speaker of the uh, German parliament will probably uh, be his, his, his swan song in, in German politics. He's, he just turned 75 recently. Matthew Karnitschnig, I know that in a previous life, you led the Wall Street Journal's coverage of the Eurozone debt crisis. When he became a finance minister in 2009, he, he talked about it in an interview with the Financial Times published this Monday. Uh, he, he, he says at one point, I'm going to quote here, he says, I remember saying to my French counterpart, uh, Christine Lagarde, you have more experience. You work for a big U.S. law firm. You had a big career and played a huge role in France. But I understand politics better than you do. Uh, I got on my colleagues' nerves, he admitted. Yeah, that's right. There's always a little bit of uh, false modesty with, with Schäuble in some of these statements. But I think that he has always relied both on his intellect. He has an amazing intellect, an amazing ability to get into the details of very arcane uh, subjects. But he also has these political instincts, which is which have uh, served him well. And at the end of his tenure... Yeah, because, because I just want to say, uh, it, factually, it's true. He does have better political instincts than Christine Lagarde, said many observers. Yeah, ab absolutely, which was why he was uh, on his way to becoming uh, German chancellor and why he survived in, in, in German politics uh, for so long and why he's he's still there uh, today. And it's also why Merkel has relied on him so much, even though she and he don't always get along. He, he really is a, a key figure uh, within her uh, conservative base. Uh, a few weeks back, uh, we had a correspondent from uh, uh, Greek public broadcasting who was saying, you know, uh, he was a bogeyman for many Greeks, uh, Wolfgang Schäuble, during the debt crisis. He showed them a lot of tough love, but they're worried that whoever his replacement might be could be even tougher. Right. And I, I, I think that's sort of ironic now, thinking back to some of the posters that uh, went up. In, in Athens during the, the referendum a couple of years ago and some of the characters uh, of Schäuble uh, dressed as a Nazi and so forth over the past several years. I, I don't really think that it would be possible to have a finance minister in Germany who would be even stricter than Schäuble at this point when it comes to bailouts and when it comes to, uh, you know, questions like the, the, the Greek program and uh, the Troika and all of these things. So I don't think that they have much uh, to worry about on, even on from the liberals, even from the FTP? Uh, even from the FTP, because I think the FTP at the end of the day, they don't want to see Europe fall apart either. And Schäuble walked a very fine line here between protecting Europe, protecting the Eurozone, at least in, in Germany's view of what the Eurozone should be, uh, and, and also uh, bringing in you know, the, the conservative base in Germany, bring them along and uh, and selling these programs to him. And that might be, at the end of the day, his, his greatest service to Europe uh, and to the Eurozone, is that he played this sort of good cop, bad cop role within within the Eurozone. And though he was hated in in Greece, he was loved in Germany and, and especially trusted in Germany, which was absolutely essential during this period of bailouts to convince his, his countrymen and people in his own party, uh, many of whom were against these bailouts, that this was what needed to be done. Matthew Karnitschnik, Politico's chief Europe correspondent. So many thanks for joining us.